at present, there are over 100 million students and over 700,000 English teachers in China, which means that each teacher has to manage at least 140 students and 4 to 7 classes on average. They also have to provide personal feedback on the students' homework. It is almost an impossible job for them to correct the pronunciation of students one by one. However, the entire situation has been changed by the Homework Together project. What is Homework Together? A platform, concept, and technology. Homework Together is an open platform. Teachers can create their classes freely and set up their own synchronized practice using resources from the question bank. They can make a comprehensive comparison, share and use various sources, and exchange information with other teachers at any time. Homework Together represents a kind of advanced learning concept. The tailor-made questions in the platform meet the requirements of the new curriculum. All the concepts are realized under the guidance of Gong Ya Fu, Director of Foreign Language Subcommittee of China Elementary Education Committee. The internationally compatible teaching concept and advanced personal learning method can improve the learning efficiency. Homework Together uses world-leading technology. The one-to-one -one psychoacoustic technology from Silicon Valley is now serving Chinese students. Standardized pronunciation training allows each child to have his own English tutor. The personal error identification technology, the powerful cloud computing system, as well as the academic record tracking curve provide strong technical support for students when learning different knowledge points and question types. The open homework platform, the advanced learning concept, together with the leading technology, makes homework stress-free for the 700,000 teachers and more engaging for the 100 million students. Homework Together realizes the education equality dream in China. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dun from uh, Homework Together. And uh, this is actually a video that uh, we made back in 2011 when we uh, first started. Uh, we had the vision of creating an interactive, interesting, and open platform for K-12 teachers, students, and uh, parents. Uh, since then, we have not had the time to make another video, uh, but our vision has not changed. Uh, before I start my uh, presentation, I, I want, want to ask you a very simple question. Is uh, teaching the same as learning? Um, I think in the last uh, 200 years, or maybe even 2,000 years, uh, we have always been talk talking about how we teach. Uh, we focus a lot on teachers, which I think is great, uh, but, but uh, we have this strange concept of the teachers uh, spending a lot of time uh, you know, talking, like what I'm doing now. And somehow, you know, all, all the things I talk about, uh, you know, including all kinds of things uh, that make up the rainbow of knowledge, somehow we think that it will just uh, fill into the students' brains. And somehow that's the best way for the students to learn. Um, but I think this cartoon illustrates quite well that uh, teaching is not the same as learning. So EJ uh, told his friend and said, I, I taught uh, my dog Spot how to whistle. And his, his friend says, uh, but I don't hear Spot whistle. Uh, then EJ said, well, I, I, I said I taught him. I didn't say he learned it. Uh, actually, I have my, my own experience of this. I was uh, uh, in, in China, I was uh, learn, studying in China until the age of 16. And I went abroad to the UK to uh, study A-levels. Uh, I was actually the class representative for English subject uh, in, in, my, in my class, and which supposedly means that I'm quite good at English. Uh, the first uh, English sentence a British guy spoke to me was, all, all right, mate, how are you? And I just couldn't understand it. So I said, pardon? And he said again, how are you? And I said, sorry? And he said, how are you? And finally I understood it. And I said, uh, fine, thank you, and you? And he couldn't understand me. Uh, and, and that was a profound experience for me, actually, because I've been learning English for 10 years um, before I went to the UK. Um, and, and I'm sure you all have experiences of this, learning something for a long time uh, without actually uh, understanding it or learning it. Um, that's, that's why we started with this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, product. Uh, the, uh, it, the vision is actually to have an, an AI tutor 
to, uh, which is not really a real tutor, uh, to have practice with students on everything. But we started with uh, English pronunciation. And we had this technology originally from Silicon Valley um, to correct the pronunciation of, of students. And uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, at least in the next 30 years, we will not be able to replace uh, teachers or tutors. I think there's a very personal element in uh, education and in learning, uh, you know, the eye to eye contact, the uh, intimate, the intimacy, the, the, the concept of love, uh, the role of the teacher as a role model, the role of the teacher as a, as a, as a kind of manager, authority uh, to get the students to learn, the role of the teacher sometimes as a, as a parent, as a mother. Um, I, I don't think these can be uh, upgraded or replaced easily in the next 30 years by technology. But I have this uh, concept of learning that there are actually two roles of the teachers. One is more like a coach, and one is more like an assistant coach. So I'll take tennis as an as example. Uh, you know, someone must have told uh, Andre Agassi to serve, um, and uh, that would be the role of the coach. Um, but someone else must have practiced uh, with, with him for something like 10,000 hours uh, so that he is you know, fluent in his, in his surf. Um, and I don't think this role should always be done by a human being. Uh, sometimes it can be done even better uh, by m more, um, more, how do I say it? More, uh, we can replicate the best uh, practice uh, and focus it on individual learners uh, for practice. Because that 10,000 hours of deliberate practice is actually uh, the, the magic when learning happens. So we, we need to find something to start with uh, to realize this vision of creating a platform. And I, I think we looked at just two, two things. One is uh, for, for K-12, uh, do we need to just concentrate on the uh, students or do we need to look at other users as well? And our, our view is that although our mission is to make learning beautiful for the students and to transfer from a teacher-centric learning to a student-centric learning, it is not a revolution. It is an evolution from the current ecosystem. So I think the best chance for us to, 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 go to, to, to get there is to actually work with schools and teachers and parents. Uh, so we uh, wanted to uh, find a product that connects uh, these users. Uh, the second was, um, you know, we, we really think that um, by combining technology uh, with learning and ed education, uh, it's the best chance for us to uh, ha have the best student experience, learning experience. Uh, so we found this product actually um, called Homework. Um, and uh, uh, you know, from when we started in 2011 to today, 90% um, uh, plus of our energy has been focused on this very small part of learning uh, called Homework. Uh, so at the moment, we focus on um, K-12 schools in China, uh, three subjects, uh, three core subjects in, in China, Chinese, uh, English, and mathematics. And uh, um, we connect the three core users um, in K-12 system, the teachers, students, and parents. And after five and a half years, uh, we have now actually reached over 100,000 schools in uh, something like 400 cities. Uh, we have over 30 million uh, registered students, uh, over 200,000 uh, registered teachers, and over 15 million uh, uh, registered parents, uh, which actually make us the largest uh, online uh, K-12 learning platform in China. And as you can see here, we have uh, covered pretty much all geographical regions in China. Uh, our uh, coverage in a city like Shenzhen, which is a first tier city, is uh, over 90%. In Beijing, Shanghai, uh, and Guangzhou, it's over 60%. And uh, we also cover very rural areas as well. We have users, as I said, in uh, almost 400 cities, uh, which, including some towns and villages. And, uh, uh, we have, as you can see, sparkles of, of users in uh, Xinjiang, in Xizang, in Qinghai, Guizhou. Uh, we have a few users in Taiwan as well. Uh, and my, my personal view is that, uh, you know, Taiwan is part of China, and uh, we'll have more and more users in Taiwan for sure. Um, actually, there is a lot of space uh, to grow, uh, because home, traditional homework uh, was a product that was used by 200 million students every day. Uh, and those students would start from the age of six to the age of 18. 
uh, and, and it would almost have a 100% 12 year retention. And it would automatically connect the teachers, students, and parents. Uh, the teachers drive the homework, students do the homework, and the parents um, get uh, feedback on the ho homework. Uh, it automatically uh, records lots of learning data, uh, traditionally on pieces of paper, uh, but now we, we can actually have structured data uh, on the cloud so that we can do analytics. And from homework, actually, we've expanded into other things. For teachers, we're actually the largest teacher's uh, forum in China, online forum in China as well, uh, with over 200,000 teachers sharing and participating in all kinds of discussions. Uh, after homework, students can do all kinds of things. Um, uh, and currently, we offer generally two things. One is uh, additional content uh, for the students to learn with. One is uh, actually tutoring through live broadcasting. Uh, and we, we do not do one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, for, the, for the time being. We only do uh, a group tutoring. So uh, it can be in the form of small classes or it can be for, in the form of bigger classes. Uh, we believe that actually for more students to study at the same time, uh, it actually is a, is a better uh, learning result than stu students studying individually uh, for most cases. Uh, also, the, the teachers can communicate with parents on our platform. The teachers can send reports. Uh, we generate automatic reports to the parents as well. The parents, we serve as the largest parents community, uh, online parents community in China with uh, 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 over 15 million parents. Uh, and the parents can also uh, choose uh, you know, additional content or additional courses uh, for their students. And they can discuss with each other uh, on you know, how to educate kids and uh, uh, things that they, they care about, like buying a house next to schools uh, in, in China. This is actually the core product philosophy. There was a term called e-learning, uh, which I, my understanding was that uh, basically you change uh, everything uh, physical to electronic, uh, like uh, changing books to e-books and uh, uh, recording uh, courses to videos. And it didn't really work uh, too well. And uh, so we have come up with this concept called iLearning, uh, which is really embedded in all our product development. Um, and I'll just explain very briefly here. Uh, it consists of seven eyes. Um, first, we, we think that the world is actually really beautiful. Um, it's beautiful because it's, uh, there's a lot of space in the world. I actually just came back from Yellowstone, and, um, uh, and it was beautiful. Uh, however, <laughs> when we are learning, uh, we, we collapse this beautiful world into a very uh, two-dimensional, and uh, uh, boring um, text uh, for the students to look at. And I, I think the crucial problem was that uh, when we learn, we use all senses, uh, you know, visual, uh, auditory, kinesthetic, uh, thinking. I don't know whether that's a sense, but, um, you know, we... Uh, and if you think about something that you remember really well, it, it must consist of all, all the senses. Um, and we want our students to learn things, to remember things. Um, but we just give them like a, a book with, with, with words on it. And, uh, and you know, all these sense, senses collapse. And so I think um, the crucial thing to, uh, to, to, to uh, developing an online product is, is to uh, r mm, expand. Uh, or maybe to reenact the, the world into what it should be. Uh, so the idea of having technology is for students to be able to travel through space without actually uh, you know, having to travel through space physically. Uh, so that's, that's the meaning of interactivity. Um, the second thing that we think is very important is uh, interest. Uh, so I think it means two things for us. One is that we, we built a gamif gamified uh, system on our platform. So after any learning activity that we think is, is good, uh, we grant the students uh, virtual coins we call study piece. Uh, they can exchange these study piece for uh, real, real rewards like uh, pencils, rubber. Uh, you know, also, they can exchange for virtual rewards. Every student has an avatar, and they, uh, boys like to buy you know, shields and uh, armor. Girls like to buy bags and uh, shoes, um, and, and they can see each other. Um, and also, we organize activities, online activities. Uh, so for example, on the 12th of March this year, it was International Tree Plantation Day. So the students, um, in order to particip participate in our activity, they had to exchange these study piece into water droplets. Um, and uh, then 
they'll be able to actually go to the physical world and plant trees and take pictures and upload these pictures. And uh, we run, run it kind of like a competition for schools. So we award the schools with the most students planting most trees. Uh, but in order to participate in this, they, they had to actually spend the, uh, the, the, the study piece that they learned, uh, they, they earned through learning. Uh, so through this kind of a reward system, uh, students got really interested. Before, I, I would say quite confidently that students hated homework. Uh, but now we had you know, over 30 million students who asked their teachers to assign them uh, assignments and homework uh, pretty much every day. Um, the, the second, but having this uh, idea, uh, giving rewards to students after learning is not exactly perfect because then the students tend to uh, just love the rewards instead of learning itself. So I, I think another part of interesting is actually to make the content itself very interesting. And we do that uh, 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 partly by, again, offering a three-dimensional um, you know, uh, visualization, multimedia uh, to the students' content. But also, we try to link content uh, horizontally. So when we were studying before, uh, you know, we divide human wisdom into different subjects. And, uh, but in fact, everything's connected. So we try to make it interesting uh, to, to connect this content again. So if it's the students wanted to explore further, um, like the concept of, of an apple in, in the context of, uh, of, of the Bible, in the context of uh, Newton discovering uh, physical laws, in the concept of uh, Steve Jobs, uh, or in the concept of uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese aunties dancing, uh, there was a famous song called The Little Apple. Um, or, or, or the concept of New York, as in the Big Apple. Uh, they can do that. Um, also, we think, uh, apart from the dimension of space, um, one other thing technology can help us do is the dimension of time. Um, so before, the homework cycle, or the learning feedback cycle, was very long. Uh, for homework, generally, in China, it was uh, like a week. Um, so the, the teachers assign homework and say, you know, submit it in three days. And students go back, they do it, they submit it, and then uh, the teachers have to mark the homework. And when they return the homework to the students, usually it's like a week, and the students already forgot what they did. Um, so there was not an efficient feedback cycle. Uh, we have changed this feedback into an immediate feedback. Uh, so, uh, and actually not, not just the feedback. Uh, we actually recommend the students straight away to do things uh, or to have uh, what we call remedial learning. Um, if, the, if we think it is, is a fit, fit. And that um, brings me to the next concept of individualization, which is very close to my heart and I think is uh, very important. Uh, it's something that technology can really help humans do. Uh, we have over 100 million problems solved every day on our platform and we have lots of data on the students. Uh, on a very narrow sense, we have tagged all these content we have and uh, uh, into very granular uh, levels, and we can tell uh, what the students are good at, uh, um, what um, they're not so good at. So we remind the students uh, th things they, they may work on, they need, may need to work on further. We also uh, remind the students to, uh, go, to go to areas that we think are quite important, uh, but may not have been covered uh, by the teachers uh, yet. Uh, also, we have this uh, algorithm to um, test whether the students have for already forgotten things they have learned and um, uh, to, 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 to make sure that uh, they are constantly, um, they're constantly on top of the uh, knowledge and skill skills that they need. But this is a narrow sense of individualization. On a broader sense, uh, we think students' dreams and uh, uh, characters and their destinies in life are, are different. And, uh, we think actually we can recognize these through the different activities students do. Um, we have found that some students prefer to uh, leave everything last minute and do it very efficiently there. Uh, some do it too much so that they, they, don't, they, they pro procrastinate and don't, they don't finish. Some students are very well planned and they start homework from you know, the first minute and, and they distribute it evenly. We found students tackle mistakes or, or failures uh, differently. Uh, some give up. Uh, some, you know, try again and again without being too clever. Uh, some, you know, go to an instruc instructional content and learn it. Some go to a real tutor. Uh, some ask questions. Uh, some students ask less questions and just want to absorb stuff. Uh, I think in a, in a 
broader sense, I mean, some students are very introvert, uh, but they may have a, a universe of black and white pieces, um, and they're brilliant chess players. Some players, some students may be, you know, too extrovert. Uh, they, they, they move a lot, like I used to move a lot, I still move a lot, uh, but they may be good dancers. Um, so, um, and all this data we have recorded, uh, we are expanding more and more in the spectrum uh, to be able to recognize um, you know, each individual student's uh, uh, characters and uh, um, so that we can, we can help these students individually. Uh, and we go one step further to intelligence. Uh, we have this uh, AI chatbot to, to uh, have a co confined conversation at the moment with the students in English, um, like talking about the weather. Um, and we also have this uh, handwritten recognition engine to recognize hand, hand, handwriting of students, and then be able to mark those uh, things like essays and uh, complex math and geometry problems so that we alleviate further the teacher's burdens. Uh, we have an uh, intelligent uh, tutor, um, which is also not a real tutor, using artificial intelligence, uh, helping us answer questions of students, be it like a technical question or a uh, learning-centric question. Uh, and the last, Oh, there's two more, yeah. So uh, one other important thing is we try to connect students through, uh, that's the meaning of intimate. We think uh, before students were learning mostly alone uh, and that was not good. And I think lots of uh, uh, Chinese uh, problems came from this culture of uh, being too competitive and learning lonely. Um, we actually try to connect students through technology and not just students, but also teachers and parents into an intimate network of people. Um, and the last but not the least, we work with uh, a lot of international partners, uh, like content partners, like, uh, for example, Kaplan, um, Moon Kang from uh, Korea for picture books. We work with a range of technology partners globally as well. And I think uh, the, um, uh, like I was saying before, um, before technology, you know, students had to go to a school according to their zip code. Uh, but now, it doesn't really matter where you're born. Uh, you can have the best uh, education that, that is available to you through technology. So I think th those were actually the, uh, what in Chinese we would call the shu, uh, maybe the, the, the means. Uh, the end, uh, as I was saying, was um, having a, learn a student-centric, a learner-centric uh, learning experience. So using those uh, concepts or philosophies, we build products to make sure that students are actually learning. And, uh, and, and to some extent, uh, their learning experience, uh, blended learning experience, is actually a lot more e efficient and a lot more uh, interesting, a lot more inter interactive and individualized uh, for the learners. So uh, show some graphs of our growth. Uh, so we have not really grown that fast. I think education companies shouldn't grow too fast. Um, so, you know, we, we reached our first million users in uh, 15 months, and now we have uh, over third, uh, 40 million users in total, including 30 million students and uh, something like 50 million parents. Uh, our monthly active student at the moment is about uh, 10 million. And uh, last year, actually, at this summit, I was asked the question, uh, how do you make money? And uh, my answer was, I think we're running out of time. And uh, I think we shouldn't be too fast when we do education. Uh, so we actually started uh, our monetization uh, attempts uh, last, uh, uh, last year. And we've been running formally for about, about half a month, uh, half a year. And our monthly revenue at the moment is about two million. Um, so it's easy to make money if you have educational value. And our valuation uh, in the last round of uh, fund fundraising was uh, 600 million. Um, yeah, I think there's a very huge space. As I was saying before, uh, even just in, in China, in K-12, we have over 200 million students, uh, over 130 million uh, teachers, and at least 400 million parents in uh, something like 20, uh, 230,000 schools. Um, the two monetization we are doing uh, one is related to learning content, which before was mostly in the forms of books. 
Um, that was a 50 billion USD market. Uh, second, live tutoring, which before existed as uh, uh, tutoring centers offline. And that's a 250 billion USD market. Um, and um, you know, th these are huge markets. So there's a, a lot of ways we can grow. We have a team of about 1,000, um, uh, roughly half-half from education and technology industries. We have a very good team. And uh, we have a very good investor base, uh, global brands like uh, Tiger, DST, and Tomasic, and also the best ad tech investors like Gen Fund, Shunwei, and H Capital. And they have helped us a lot, and we are very grateful. Uh, I think that will be it. The meaning of homework, Yixi uh, is actually homework together. And uh, our mission is to make learning beautiful. And I think this is something that we face as a race. Um, this, this is a global challenge. And I hope that we can work together and make learning beautiful together. Thank you.